Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Before I get into today's video, if you could just do me a favor, could you just like this video, if of course you like the video, and also just leave some kind of comment. I really am curious to see if this causes the, um, the channel to grow and get recommended more because of it. I never wanted to be the person to be like, please like and subscribe, because you hear all that on every video, but maybe they have, probably have a point to get it to grow. And I only mention that because I would like to see the channel, of course, grow. I mean, everybody would like to uh, have their channel grow, but I think if it reaches more people, then I could do more things for you guys, because I everything that I make gets rolled back into the content anyway. But um, anyway, let's get to today's video. This head is the Pro Max. Project X 200cc head and if you go back and watch some of my previous videos I have done one over the 185cc Project X head and the 215cc head as well I'm getting ready to do one for small block board guys on the 185 and 205 so those are coming up just be patient anyway this is a head review of this a customer actually said hey can you order this up and I am a, a dealer for Pro Max so I can get their heads he said hey can you order it up do a video for it I said, absolutely. I hadn't seen this head, and I'd be glad to do it. So um, this head, retail, just letting you know, it's about $1,400. Different vendors have different price. It's $1,400 assembled for a hydraulic roller. So it just gives you an idea of price point. He also wanted the steam holes because he's going to put on a 400. Because of that, I'm going to flow it on a 4155 bore, too. These steam holes didn't cost anything extra. So that's a good thing. Anyway, here's the head itself. If you know anything about Promax stuff, they're all Chinese head. Everything that Promax makes is cast overseas in China. And they've got their different brands that each one looks different. Um, the um, older design heads that they had, like their Shocker series, look like a, allegedly, a copy of a Brodix IK head. These Project X heads, allegedly, because I don't want to say 100% sure, but I'm about 90% there, are a copy, to me, it looks like a copy, allegedly, of an AFR head. So far, they've all been a really, really close looking to an AFR head, and this one is no exception. If you look at the chamber, that chamber looks very identical to an AFR, and every other point to it, and I'll kind of point it out, even like these, that's an AFR thing. They have their round tubes for where the push rods go through. That's what it is. I think this one, allegedly, is a copy of the AFR-195 competition ported head. Um, I say allegedly, just to be safe, but it's pretty doggone close. And there's a couple of things that give it away. First off, the valve sizes. This is a 208-1600, and that's how the AFR competition head is. The biggest the giveaway is the way the vein is. On the competition AFR-195, the vein actually faces this direction. If you were to get the street 195, it would face straight, just like normal, about here. It would end here. This one looks exactly like that. The other thing that gives it away is at the short side, uh, which if you never port heads and you don't see them as much, you won't have a clue what I'm talking about. And the camera's not doing a great job with it, but it's very steep, it's very tall, and it's higher here on this side. And the only one I've ever seen it do it, and you can kind of see this way. I'm trying to capture it with the camera. I'll flip it around and show you a different view. But you can see how it's uh, less here, or yeah, more material here. In other words, see how it's kind of bulged here and coming into the groove here? That's AFR is the only one I've seen do a short side that way. That's it, period. So I'm relatively confident, and I'll show you the different views, and you can make your own judgment that this is a allegedly a copy of the AFR 195 head. I did some measurements just to kind of see. Yes, it's a 208 valve. I measured the throat. For those who don't know, the throat is from here to here. It comes in at 1.865, which is about 90%, 89.6. So that's really good. The bowl measures two inches across. That's 96.1. Uh, that measurement for the throat is really close to AFRs. The bowl is a little bit smaller than the AFR at 195 competition, but not by much. The one difference, and you can order this head two ways from Pro Max. Um, you can order it with 11 32nd stems, that's these, or you can even order it with the 8 millimeters. If you got the AFRs, they're all 8 millimeters. So every one of their valves are 8 millimeter stems. For those that don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the width of that stem. Common size is 11 32nds. AFR and LSs are 8 millimeters, which is a smaller stem diameter than this. 
It makes the valve weigh less. And since the valve takes up less space here, they also usually flow more. We're going to find out though, because I'm going to flow it. Um, these heads were set up for a hydraulic roller, and these are the valves that came with them. I will say AFR uses valves that probably will flow better. Because one of the things I can definitely notice is you can see right here, this is the seat angle on the valve, and this is the back cut. There's not much back cut, so that's probably going to hurt low left flow. I'm going to tell you straight up. Um, also, this is a nail head type of exhaust valve. It's not tulip like the AFR uses, so that's definitely not going to help the exhaust flow either. Anyway, the casting itself looks very clean. The transition from the top cut, there's a small ledge here, but not bad at all. I have to say, um, even though they're cast in China and it may go against a bunch of your principles, they really do good job on some of their heads, and these being some of them because they're really, really clean. The transitions are nice. You don't see a lot of garbage in there. Um, the valve job is great there. It, it looks good. Now, I will say this. Um, Promax actually blends these valve jobs in with the bottom cuts through here. They do that because from the factory, they're left with a, like a ledge here. And I'll show you whenever I do the, the small block Ford versions. There's a ledge left here and Promax knocks that out. And on some of the Promax heads, they'll actually come and hit the seat angle with the stone just to make sure it for sure will seal because the valve job was done in China and then finished off here in America. So in other words, if it's not, <coughs> excuse me, if it's not sealing, they'll do a stone on it to make sure it does seal. Let me show you a different view so you can get a better idea of this head. And then of course, I'll show you flow numbers. Here's the view from this side. Like I said, it looks really a lot like an AFR. Um, the openings look the same. It really does. This is what I mean by the short side. You see how it's higher over on this corner? That's an AFR thing because it goes high here, really, really heavy radius, in other words, in this corner, and not so much in this one. Kind of the opposite of what most people do. Most of us dig this corner down and leave more radius on this side. AFR kind of does the opposite, or we're going to leave it flat, not AFR. So that looks familiar. This is exactly how the heads came. So I have to give Promax credit. They use a, a ID locator. Great deal because a lot of companies just put a shim. So that's great. I'm not a huge fan of these seals. I will say these seals actually do seal up well. They're just not my favorite because I have seen where these um, rings come off. Um, however, since they're using an ID locator, chances of the spring rubbing and knocking them off is pretty rare. But um, that's that really truly helps. But I just, nothing wrong with these seals. They're definitely cheaper, but it's not the ones I use. Usually, we use this, and that's what AFR uses as well. Uh, love the guide plates. These slotted ones, heaven. So if you can get these, definitely makes lining up stuff much better. So good there. Uh, here's something. That's a seven degree lock. I'm not a huge fan of those. I've mentioned this before. And it's not so much that they don't withstand it. Usually when it tears down the heads after they've been running on a seven degree lock, what they do is this is your groove that holds onto the lock. It will roll that corner and make a kind of mushrooms it out and it makes it hard to push the valve back out through the guide because it's mushroomed out so it's, i don't like seven degree locks because of that i never see them with tens only sevens is it bad is it going to drop no usually from the maintenance standpoint i'm not a fan anyway will they work fine yes so there's that view let me show the exhaust you'll be like oh that really does look like an afr this is the exhaust view I mean, the ports look exactly like an AFR, allegedly. So, I mean, they're very close. They look like that 195, and you could tell they're, and I haven't mentioned this before, but if you look at a 195 AFR head versus a 210, the 210 exhaust port is actually raised up higher. So, typically, the 210s do flow more on the exhaust. So, this port's a lower one. Um, it's still going to do decent, I'm sure, but we're going to find out. So, now you heard me blab enough. Let's go ahead and put it on the bench and see what it does. I will flow in a 4155 bore, which I know you're like, wait a minute. They flow it on a 4030. How come you don't do it on that? Again, this guy's using it for that. Besides, this, if I flow it on a 4155, this is the best it's ever going to flow for you guys. Um, so, if you're on a 4030 and you're like, uh, that's the best, it, it's only going to get worse if you flow it on a 4030. So, this would be the best case scenario for the head. So, anyway, let me flow it and we'll get to it. I was getting ready to flow the head when I spotted something, so I want to show this. Whenever, there's a reason why I never put these rocker arm studs and guide plates on a head when I send them out. I'll put them in the box separate, but never on the head when I ship them out. Here's the reason why. I just spotted it. 
that ain't clearing. No way in the world that's clearing. If you've got your, there's the whole slot for your push rod. There's your guide plate. So yeah, that ain't gonna work. Now before you're like, Promax totally messed up. No, they just threw them on there and bolted them on, probably to save on shipping a little bit. Um, Cause then you'd have an extra bag, but I never do that. All you have to do is loosen these off and move these over to where you need to be and then tighten them back. That's it. I never, and really, no manufacturer really should send out the guide plates with the studs and everything on them. They just send, send them out separate. You should assemble these on your engine so you can have the rockers line up. Because each rocker brand is a little different than the other and it might take more this way or that way to get it to center better on the valve. Anyway, I thought I'd bring that up real quick. Let's get to flowing. All right, I thought I'd show you how I flow the head um, before I get to it or how it was set up to flow. I'm not gonna flow it because you, all you'd hear would be a loud sound of a vacuum cleaner. So that's the reason why I don't record them too often. But um, here's how it's done. This does have a radius entry plate on it. This is a 1206, it's slightly larger because I have modified this. Um, you have to add modeling plate on this side just because it's not, the ports themselves are not 1206 wide. They are tall though and you have to fill in the corners. So there's that. I used a, always use something else to hold up the spring on whenever I'm flowing the other one. It does have a spark plug in there. That's a projected tip spark plug. So that's what was used for that. I don't flow it with an exhaust pipe. Some people do, I don't. Um, it also has a head gasket that's used for the ceiling, which is right there. So let's get the numbers. So, I covered up this other section first because I want to show you this. These are the numbers. So these are the flow numbers. Be like, what lift points are that I can't see? I want to show you this. Give me a second here. That. This will make better sense now. This cylinder one is the Promax 200cc. <coughs> cylinder two is that head. This is the Project X from Promax, and it's a 200cc. So in other words, this is their older version, and this is their new stuff, the Project X. So you can see how much difference there is in flow. And you'll get to see the flow numbers. So we look at 100, the Project X is better at 67. Uh, it's definitely better there at two at 136. 197 is still better at three. At four, it's 246, and I have to say, that's pretty stout. For an has cast head, um, with that back cut, that is pretty strong. 500, 277. So it's still better than the 200cc Pro Max. And then I recorded this one. I didn't on the other one because it's a little bit different. This one was actually still climbing to 550 and then it started backing up a flow. and went 287 at 550 and then it reversed and flow and went 275, 270, and 266. So overall, very good on flow. But if you notice, I put a line because this line is where the flow separates. So the Project X is better all the way until there. From 700 on, the older version is better. So, and you could tell by about four there, and about 10 there. The exhaust side is a very similar situation. The Project X is much, is about the same there, about 10 CFM better there, about 10 there, considerably better at four, strong there, and about 10 there. But from that point on, so from this case, from uh, 500 on, the Pro Max 200 CC is actually better on the exhaust flow, which I did find that a little weird because if you look at the numbers, it looks pretty normal. Um, the, by the way, these are not outstanding exhaust numbers. Just flat out tell you, they are not outstanding at all. The intake, very good. The exhaust, not so much. Um, however, it's still way better than that at this point. So I thought it was gonna keep climbing. I thought we were gonna get a 173, maybe a 195, and keep climbing, maybe to hit 200 cc, 200 CFM. It just didn't happen. So not too happy with the exhaust port on that. It looks great, it just doesn't move any air. And I bet the reason why is when AFR designed these, they have a tulip exhaust valve that they use for flow. These are nail head and it sure changes things. I should have recorded the sound it made because it sounded like it was popping. Um, so it was like, boo, 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 boo. it wasn't consistent and it's because things aren't stable on the exhaust port from that. So there's that. Now, since I told you Allegedly, I think this is a copy of the AFR 195 competition head. How far off is it actually from the head it copied? I've got the numbers. This right here is the AFR 195 competition port. You can see how close they are or far away. So if you look at one, 
Oh, I should point this out. I totally forgot. Um, when I float the Project X, it's on a 4155 bore, and that's on a 430. So will this pick up? Yes. Will it pick up that much? No. It's probably going to gain about 3 or 4 CFM. So if you're wondering, this will gain about 3 or 4 CFM. The AFR 195 competition also float on a 430 bore, not 4155. So it's not exactly apples to apples. So the AFR competition in the Pro Max would be the 200, but not the Project X. However, let's see how close it actually gets still. So we have 66. This one, Pro Max wins with that one. At 200, 147 AFR is much better. And then at 300, 193, it's worse. Pro Max wins there. This one shocked me, 238. To a 246 Pro Max Project X is better. And then you look at 5, 274. To a 277, the Project X is better. But at 6, almost 300. Not quite there at all. And then from that point on, um, even we look at 8, 268. To a 267. So they're relatively close here. At 600, it's kicking the crap out of it. The... Uh, Pro Max is, or not Pro Max, but AFR is, and the lower numbers, it's kind of close. In all fairness, I've met you if you averaged them, um, the wind's probably still going to go to AFR because it's so much up on, it's a good 20, almost 25 CFM up at 6, uh, even though it lost 10 there, it's still 3 there, yeah, it's still going to be AFR, is probably going to be edging it out, but not by much. Um, Here's the exhaust. This is not even in the same ballpark. I will tell you that. AFR kicks the, it just kicks it. It beats it bad. 53, this one's better. 159, we're talking almost 14 CFM better there. Dang near 20 CFM there. And now we're getting into ridiculous better. So the exhaust port on the AFR 195, so much better than the Project X. The intake ports are relatively close. However, this head, 2800 bucks. This head, 1400 bucks. So it's about $1,400 difference. You're like, well, it's not worth it. Look how close it is. AFRs also have 8 millimeter valves. They also use a um, smaller diameter valve spring. So this one's more likely to go into valve float far before that one will. Promise that. Um, other than that, the flow wise, they're close on intake. They are definitely not on exhaust. Is it a good head? Yeah, absolutely. I'm a dealer, so if you would like to purchase the set, I'd be happy to sell them. If you're like, you know what, I want to be with AFR, I could say a set of those too. But pretty good head. Um, and if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them when I get some time. Hope you enjoyed the video. Look for the Ford versions, which are down here. The 185 and 205 to come up in later times. All right, you guys remember, I'm no Superman, and take care.